I wasn't even gonna make a video today. I honestly wasn't gonna record today, but I just got done reading this volume, you know, in my leisure time. I wasn't even planning on making a recommendations video on this, but I enjoyed it so much, and it was one of the most dialogue it, it is spoilers it is my favorite dialogue or i guess conversation um manga di dialogue heavy manga i've ever read in my entire life um and i'll get into why i enjoyed it so much so that, that i had to hop on here had to turn on the pc and had to film an episode of spunk recommends the series where i read random niche one-off or just unknown manga and i vocalize my enjoyment of them and try to get at least one of you to read it um so today's manga that i am going to be recommending is see you tomorrow at the food court by apologies shinichiro oh <clears throat> i already messed up shinichiro narie oh okay i'll put it on the screen i don't know if i said that right i think i kind of killed that maybe not um so yeah um, as always with these videos, my goal is to get you to read this this manga, right, that I recommended. So at any point in the video, if you're like, that sounds like something I would like, turn off the video and just read the manga. The less you know, the better. Um, this should be a quick one, though. Um, but yeah, okay. So see you tomorrow at the food court. What is it about? So it is about two characters, uh, one named Wada, which is a rich, quiet girl, and her friend Yamamoto, Okay. And the reason why it's called See You Tomorrow at the Food Court is because the entire manga is set in a food court table. So food court as in like, you know, like you ever go to the mall and there's a bunch of foods everywhere, like that type of food court. Um, and these two girls after school or after work or whatever, just whatever they're doing, whatever they're doing in their lives, they always find time to meet each other at the food court and just rant to each other. Right. And that's literally that's why I said it's my favorite dialogue driven manga, because the entire premise of the manga is in that table, in that food court. We never see any other set pieces. We see like a little bit of the outside world, but not like we don't see their day to day lives. We just see the food court and we learn about them because of how they talk to each other. And that's one of the things that I really enjoyed, like how realistic the dialogue is. I mean, the entire manga is just looking at two friends having a conversation. Like it almost felt like I was the third person in that table eating with them. I was like, what'd you eat today? Okay, you got a burger. Okay, I got, you know, I got some Popeyes. You know, what's up? How are you? Like it really felt almost like, like a podcast in manga form. Like I know. Podcasts are a topic of, of, of discussion right now, right? Like, you know, everybody's starting a podcast, right? So these anime girls started a podcast. And it's like you're just learning about them, like, from little things like, oh, just, you know, Wada, the, the quiet girl, loves this gotcha game, right? She loves this gotcha game. And she's always summoning. And she's like, oh, I need to get this handsome dude because the new banner's out. And then Yamamoto is, like, helping her out. But then it gets a little deep. And, you know, I don't want to get into spoilers, but, you know, they get a little deep with it and they start opening up to each other and you start realizing what they mean to one another. And, you know, I don't, I mean, obviously you make your own judgment, right? I don't think it's like a romance story. You know, there's a lot of things in this manga that kind of like make me think, okay, no, we're not, we're not heading the Yuri route, right? But if you want to ship them, go ahead. You know, they, they are quite, um, they look quite lovely together. Um, and another thing that I wanted to talk about is just how much i enjoyed these characters right so wada you know is like a short girl she's like rich she um she's very shy you know she doesn't really like open up to uh, people ex besides her friend um yamamoto and when i first read the manga i immediately clinged onto her first right so you know when i read manga it is what it is it's an art form sue me i cling onto the characters that i like their design the most right if I, you know, I usually go for like the black haired um, characters, you know, especially like the straight black hair like that, you know, that to me always has like a certain, I don't want to say, I don't want to say like cliche or I don't want to say like, like trope, right? Because it, that's a bad thing. But, you know, usually when you see like that preppy girl with the long black hair, you, uh, you know what you're getting yourself into, right? Mean, but also has a big heart, you know, probably smart, can probably get down and figure stuff out. You know, usually those type of characters, I, I I lean towards, right? So immediately I was like, okay, I like her. She's cool. And, you know, honestly, she's not even tropey at all. She's a very unique character. 
I'll let you read it to figure out why. But then, on the other side of the coin is her friend, um, Yamamoto. Now, I am going to make someone cringe right now. She's a guy, Gairu? Guy, oh my god. You know, the, the Japanese women that have, like, bronzer and blonde hair and all that. And the big uh, hoop earrings and stuff like that. So, she's one of those, right? Now, this is really... Call me uncultured, right? I know they exist, but this is the first time in any manga that I've encountered one, at least that I think of. Like the only other one that I think that I that I saw recently was from like the Persona 5 uh mobile game in Korea. There's like a Gairu there too. And you know, I, you see them in anime and stuff, but I don't think I've ever read a manga where the prominent character is one, right? So you know, I've never encountered this character. This is uh, this is this is uh, something that I was like, okay, this is new to me, right? But she ended up being my favorite character at the end of the story. She is a really good friend. That is the one thing that I took away from this. She's a great friend. She listens. She helps uh, Wada out when she needs to. And she ended up being one of my favorite... I, like, I don't... Okay. She ended up being one of my favorite manga characters, right? Now, I do read quite a bit of manga. This could definitely be recency bias. I literally am filming this at 11.02 a.m. I think I finished reading this like at 10.45, right? This could be recency bias, but I'm so serious. Read this manga. This character is amazing. And the way that it's um, that she's written, again, I go back to it. Very organic. Very realistic. It's like you just put a camera in front of two friends in a random spot of Japan and just, just figure out their lives through their conversations. Um, this is, by every sense of the word, slice of life. Literally a slice of life. Slow stakes, but really endearing, right? And it's weird because, yeah, they do get a little deep with it. But, you know, we're not entering boon boon territories of, like, emotional distress. Where, like, you know, you need, like, to call out of work for a week just to recover. It's nothing like that. But I did find myself. Now, this is something that I do when I experience media in general. I get so attached to the characters that when I finish, like, when I get to that last page or when I get to the last boss fight, whatever it is, the last episode, I... I feel this emotion, not because the story itself was sad or the story itself was like making me feel things. It, it's more like the emotion of like, oh my God, it's over, right? It's over. Like I just recently played um, Nino Kuni, Wrath of the Witch King. Bonus recommendation. Play that game if you like RPGs. Not the saddest game. Okay, it's a little sad. Not the saddest video game. But at the end... When the adventure was ending, I was like, oh my god, these characters are gone, right? Like, and I'll never see them again. And, you know, it, it does happen to me from time to time. Not everything I consume, right? But this, it happened to me here, right? And, like, let me check. I'm holding the I'm holding the manga. I've been holding the manga the whole time. You can't even see. This has 161 pages. This is, like, I've read volumes that are um, bigger than this. Single volumes. Th this whole story wraps up in 160 pages. And... When, I, when they were gone, I, I was like, oh my god, I need 1,060 more, right? I was like, why are you guys gone? Come back to me. I need to hit, figure out what's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow at the food court, right? Um, but yeah. Um, you know, I can't get into plot detail because plot detail is the conversation. And to get into the conversations is to spoil the charm of the story. So, you know, I hope me dancing around the plot was at least able to entice you a little bit. You know, at the end of the day, if you're not into Slice of Life... This is not going to change your mind at all. If you like Slice of Life or have a passing interest of Slice of Life, get in here. Get in here. I'm serious. Get in here. You will enjoy it. This has my seal of approval, whatever that's worth. Um, And yeah, today's recommendation is see you tomorrow at the food court. Thank you for watching. And I hope you read it. And if you do, let me know what you think. Bye.